Hey guys, this is Eric Weingartner with Weingartner Racing. Today's video is about the differences between the a hydraulic roller camshaft and a solid roller camshaft as far as duration and lift. Because this is a follow-up to that LS versus small block Chevy video that I did earlier this week. And the reason why I'm doing this video is because many, many people had said, well, the small block Chevy had a much larger cam in it than the LS. And that's why it makes more power. Um, we're going to get to how much larger it actually is versus what you think it is. But, um, anyway, I'm going to do some basics to kind of give away what it is, um, um, the way the things works before I actually get into the actual numbers so that you understand what I'm saying. So if it seems a little heavy on tech, it is because I just don't want to have to explain stuff in comments because it's much harder to do that way. I feel anyway. So... Let's see how close the camshafts are, but before I do that, let me explain how the system works. So most LS engines, I mean, almost every one that I've seen, they use a hydraulic roller lifter. This happens to be one for an LS engine. Now, don't get me wrong, you can put solid rollers in them, which I'm going to do in mine eventually, but most of you guys are running in a hydraulic roller lifter like so. And this is a hydraulic roller lifter. Now, if you notice, it doesn't have a link bar because LSs don't need it. What is a link bar? That's this thing. The reason why I'm explaining all this is because I'm fairly certain most LS guys never see small block Chevy stuff or big block Chevy stuff or any other stuff. So this might all be new to them. So this is a link bar. So it prevents the lifters from rotating so that the wheel doesn't go the wrong direction on the cam. You have to have it on any roller lifter. The reason why we don't have one on the LS like this is because it's sitting in a tray and that tray connects with these sides here and prevent it from turning. So anyway, the dip, big difference between a hydraulic roller lifter, which is this one, and a solid roller lifter like these is this. This is called the plunger. You can see these, that metal ring that goes around it. That's where your push rod sits right in here and this plunger will go down. That makes it the hydraulic part because it's able to pump. Um, or to compress. So typically what you have happen in an LS engine is you put these in and then you set a, have a certain length of push rod and when you tighten down your rockers because they're pedestal mount, that will push this cup right here down a certain amount in the lifter and that's called your preload. And that preload is determined by how much push rod length you actually have on an LS engine because it's a pedestal mount so it's not adjustable in that fashion. The only way you can adjust it is through the push rod length. And it sits in there and that's the way it works pretty simple. I have to give LS a lot of credit because that's the simplest thing. These same lifters that you see here, this exact lifter, they actually had it in a small block Chevy. So I had some moron comment on one of my last videos that the small block Chevy didn't have roller lifters. That's false. They had them starting in like 85 and they had them all the way till they stopped. And then the lifters looked a lot like this. They just had, and they looked exactly like this, to be honest with you. They had a uh, metal, they called it a dog bone. Instead of a link bar, they had a metal disc that went around each one of these and they were held in place that way. And that's the way it worked. But the small block Chevy, different from the LS as far as that goes, is they had a, um, it was adjustable length. Um, you had adjustability in the push rod, not the push rod, the rocker arm side. So on an LS, you get that push rod length and that sets your preload. On a small block Chevy, the way you would do it is you'd tighten down a rocker nut. You couldn't just torque the rocker studs down. Instead, what you do is you get to zero where the push rod makes contact with this cup here and with the rocker arm, and then you give it between a quarter turn to one and a quarter turn, depending on what you like, down. And that pushes that push rod cup down here to go down. And that's how it works. So it, the small lock Chevy was adjustable. Um, the LS obviously is not. Your adjustability just comes from push rod length. That's the essence of a hydraulic roller lifter um, design. Now, how does that vary from the solid roller lifter? This is a solid roller lifter. This is for a set of small block Chevy, but it didn't matter. The LS ones actually look exactly like as well. So I've got a set for the LS. If you notice, that cup has nothing around it. So the push rod sits in there, but it has zero adjustability. So it will not compress down. It will not come down. The way you set these is you have something called lash. And that's the distance between the tip of the rocker to the tip of the valve. And you put a feeler gauge in there that's measured at a certain distance and you set it that way. So let's say you want 20 thousandths, you put a 20 thousandths feeler gauge between the tip of the valve and the rocker arm, 
and you adjust your rocker arm nut, and that's how you do it. Now, in LS guys, you might not, this may seem really weird because you're so used to just torquing down their rocker arms. You have to have a nut that, or, that adjusts a certain thing. You can't just torque it down. Otherwise, you would make it too tight and it wouldn't work. These are solids. So what's the advantage for each one? I'm gonna go through them really, really fast. The solid, because it has no plunger, it has a greater RPM capability than a hydraulic roller, in theory. Let me explain why. That plunger that's inside here, it can pump up because there's just oil in it. So even though you have the push rod that goes down a certain distance, it could pump up with oil and actually, if it pumps up with oil, it's gonna push, rod, push the push rod up which opens the valve more, and essentially it's like having valve float, so it's holding the valve open. So not a good thing. So the reason why small block Chevy guys eventually went to this is because we're like, well, um, there's nothing to pump up. So if it goes in a valve float, what we can do is we can add a stiffer spring, and then because these can't pump up, we have no problem with valve float, and we can go extend in higher RPM. Now already, before some keyboard warriors start saying, well, the LS doesn't go to a whole lot of RPM with these, you can. Um, there are some things that have been done. So, and I'm being honest with you and as much as I can be on this. Whether you like it or not, LS is still can go into valve flow with the hydraulic roller. Um, so the thing with it is, is because it has more, the amount of travel it is, that's more that it could pump up and more likely to have you go into valve float. You could overcome this with a certain amount of spring too, but that could actually cause some damage inside the plunger itself and other things as well. Now they actually make something called a limited travel um, hydraulic roller lifter, where this plunger, like this is just a standard travel, which means it can go down, I think between 80 and 100 thousandths down in here, which means there's an 80 to 100 thousand movements it could do, doesn't mean it will do. They can hang a valve open. The limited travel limits is between, I think it's like between 20 and 40 thousand, depending on the manufacturer. So it will only pump up a certain amount. So it's less likely to keep the valve open and go to higher RPM that way. The other thing is on a hydraulic roller cam, so I'm not on the actual cam, you can run solid roller lifters. And then you can just lash them at six thousandths and you don't have to really worry about that. The other thing about a solid roller lifter is they're actually stronger. So this wheel's stronger, they could take more spring pressure. So advantages for this, the biggest one is because the reason why GM used it and most stock engines use it is because as things wear out, that plunger can move up to take up the slack. So as the valve wears out, or the valve seat wears out, this takes up slack so it's not making more noise and it remains in constant contact. With a solid roller design, you have to keep adjusting lifters, your, your lash, as things wear out. That's pretty much how it goes. Now that's the basics and it took about seven minutes to explain, so bear with me on that. Let's get to the actual numbers now and see why they are not the same as far as camshaft specs. What I have here are two camshaft cards from comp cams. Now these are not using the LS, but I'm gonna use these for demonstration purposes so I can get, give you a better idea on this stuff. So you, you can understand more is what I'm trying to get at. So one is for a solid roller and one is for a hydraulic roller. Now, if you do a solid roller one first, this is from comp, this gives you an idea. Every one of the solid roller camshafts has a lash adjustment and this one is 14, it varies. So some can go all the way up to 26 thousandths I've seen. So that's that. On a hydraulic roller camshaft, you won't have that. You notice that part's missing, okay? But here's a big thing. Usually when people compare camshafts and they say one's bigger than the other, the two things they refer to of, at least when they were talking about the LS versus small block, they're talking about two things. One would be the lift, which you get here. Um, the other one being duration at 50 thousandths. Because, um, do not ever compare, you really shouldn't compare um, uh, advertised duration numbers, which I'll show you those in just a minute. You really should compare 50 thousandths, with the exception of you can't compare 50 thousand measurements between a hydraulic cam and a solid cam, and I'll explain why in a minute. And that's why when people said that the LS cam was so much smaller than the uh, small block Chevy cam, that's not entirely true. So let me just share you show you. So here we have this cam. This is actually the one that's in the S10, my S10 with the blower. If you notice, it has 244 degrees of duration at 50 thousandths, right? Um, that's at 50 thousandths. This is a solid roller cam. If we go over here, this is just a hydraulic one. That's actually in that engine that's in my son's car. This is a little hydraulic roller 
it's really, really small, 215 degrees of duration. So if you look, that's 215 versus 244. That's that's quite a bit of a difference. That's, you know, almost 30 degrees of duration difference at 50 thousandths. Almost 30. Remember that. So if we look at that one, looks way, 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 way larger, the one that's in the S10, than the one, as far as duration-wise, that's in the um, this little engine right there. But that's not entirely true. Back to this, on a hydraulic camshaft, that push rod is direct contact with the valve. So the minute the cam lobe starts moving, it's pushing the lifter up, which is opening the valve. The minute the valve opens, that's considered advertised duration. So if we look at the advertised duration, which every cam card has, see it says a six thousandths because they assume it's about six thousandths of a little bit of play in this. And then the valve starts opening. And if you look, this one says 267 degrees of advertised duration, which means this is the time that the valve opens, the minute it opens. Now, this is from a hydraulic because it's got, you guessed it, no lash. It's got that little 6,000, which is just taking up things. Now, watch this. This is the, the solid roller camshaft. You notice how its tablet lift is rated at 20,000. That's considered lash which means on the solid roller camshaft, that lifter has to move 20 thousandths before the valve even opens. That advertised duration is 277 on intake versus 267. Now remember, they were 30 degrees apart at 50 thousandths. The, by the time the valve actually opens, they are within 10. So, the reason why I say you cannot compare that hydraulic roller camshaft with an LS versus a solid roller camshaft with a small block is because of this. It, the lash has to move before the valve can actually, so the lash has to be taken up before the valve actually moves. That's not the case with the hydraulic roller. That 30 degrees difference is down to 10, and that's it. That's the same. Now, you're like, well, that's still a 244, and that's not what you ran in your small block Chevy. No, but I am using this for demonstrations. Now, you might say, well, that's not, then how is this one so different? It still makes it up at that point. Hold on a second. These numbers you see here at 50 thousandths, and everything you see here and here, these are all based on zero lash. So the duration you see at 244, that's where they put the can into the their checker, and at 50 thousandths, when the, when the, Lifter should have moved 50 thousandths. That's when it starts checking. And that's where it gets to 244. That kind of shows off some of your numbers. Now, the second thing is lift. No doubt, if you look at, and this is the other thing you really need to pay attention to. If you look at this camshaft, it says 660, right? But it's not really 660 lift because it's a solid roller. It's really got to take out that lash, minus 14. And that would be your true lift, which in this case would be doing my math wrong, 646 actual. Now, that's at 1.5 rocker ratio. I used 1.6. Now, hopefully that gives you some more basics so we can actually get to the difference between the LS1 and the small block Chevy camshaft. Okay, bear with me as I have the writing on some of this paper stuff because I misplaced the cam card for the, um, the LS, but I got it all written down. This is the cam specs that came from the small block Chevy Dynamo, the 406. This is an Urson cam, and if you get the cam card, it looks like this. So if you remember right, um, da, 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 da. the intake duration on the small block Chevy, now it's a solid roller, was 260 on an, an intake, 270 on exhaust. So it looks like it's a fairly big cam. The um, also lift was 688 and 688. If you take out lash, that's 666, 666. That's, I'm not gonna lie to you, if we compare the lift, the Texas Speed hydraulic roller was a 629, 615. For sure it had more lift. But not as much as you're thinking. That's only about, you know, 40 thousandths. That's not that much. Now, the duration, if you're comparing the 50 thousandths, so average, this is duration, remember. This is 50 thousandths. The reason why you cannot compare these numbers at 50 because this doesn't take up lash, which I'll show you in a minute. That's 260 versus a 229 from the Texas Speed at 50. So that 229 versus a 260, you're like, wow, this is the small block chip is so much larger. Again, this is solid roller. Now, Urson love these guys. If you ever deal with Urson, great guys to deal with. And the reason why is because every camshaft you buy from them, they give you something called a cam doctor. 
See, most places give you something like this. It looks like a, or like this, a cam card. But not all places give you this. This is the cam doctor. You see, the cam card prints out what the cam shaft should be. The cam doctor is a device that you put the cam in and it measures what it actually is. So this is what, we, the, what they thought it would be when they made it. This is what it actually is, and it has more specs. This is perfect. So now here, we. this is the intake part of this. And if we look at 50 thousandths, it actually measured 259.52, but that's not accurate, remember, because that's 50 thousandths. The number I'm looking for is 20 thousandths because this cam camshaft actually has more lash than 20. It's at 22 for the intake. So technically I have less duration even than this. This says 293 intake duration. This is might would be my advertised. I had to call Texas Speed to get the advertised number. These are the advertised duration numbers. So on intake on the Texas uh, Speed stage two, it's 282 degrees on intake, 297 on exhaust. That's the advertised. This is the 6,000. This means the minute the valve starts to move, it's 282 degrees of duration. The, this is close to the minute the valve moves. It's actually even less than this. On the small block Chevy, it's 293. So if we look at that, that's nine degree difference. So it looked, when I said 260 versus 229, most of the LS guys, and most guys in general thought that camshaft is so much larger in that small block Chevy. The duration that it starts to open because of the lash makes it only nine degree difference, which nine degrees, cannot argue, that's, that's, a, that's a difference. It's a pretty good difference, not gonna lie. Valve lift, it's only 40 thousandths, but there is some definite difference there. Now you might say, what about the exhaust? I didn't really even, I haven't even looked, but the Texas B was 297. Let's see what mine is. Um, yeah, I'm way over at 305. So no doubt there. I mean, well, actually, it's about the same. I'm only still about eight degrees. Now, right away, I know there's some keyboard warriors that have already started typing before watching the whole video. There's a lot that can happen between when the valve opens and when the valve closes. In other words, how fast it opens and how quickly it closes. Um, there's a lot that happened. That's called the low profile. That can vary between different manufacturers and because they've got several, several, several hundreds of lobe designs where some can open really fast and some can open really slow. Some can set them down slow. Some can, there's just a many, many variations. But for this particular video, I'm only dealing with the moment that the valve actually opens. The durations are fairly close. Now I know what you're saying then, because you're getting ready to say it. Well, that's the reason why the LS didn't make as much, at least in this configuration, as that small block Chevy. You should put a camshaft in that has the same. Well, stay tuned because I already did that. I actually had a camshaft, I'm going to tell you, I'm not gonna show you the specs on it, but this is that solid roller I'm telling you about. I actually put in an LS camshaft that had the same, I mean the exact same. So this says 293 degrees of advertised duration. I put in an LS camshaft, I've already tested it, that had the exact same advertised duration as this cam in the small block Chevy to test to see what difference it'd make, how much more would pick up from this one. You know, cause that's a bigger camshaft by duration. So I actually tested that. So you have to wait for that. Or if you don't like, I hate, I don't wanna wait. Goodness gracious, the anxiousness. What you could do, I'm gonna put the link in the description, is you can go to my online store, the link will be in the description, and you could purchase where I can text you the copy of the dyno sheet. As a note, if you have an Android phone, phone, get an iPhone, because whenever something gets texted from an iPhone to an Android, your picture quality sucks. Eventually, because I don't have a scanner, eventually, when the printed book that has all this stuff for the LS gets printed, I will have an actual PDF copy that can be emailed. I don't want to email 19 pictures. Um, it takes way too long to do that. Texting is much quicker. So if you have an iPhone, it's like 30 bucks and you can get all these results. You can see what the camshaft results actually did. And trust me, they're shocking. So for you keyboard warriors, hold on to your thoughts until you see the results because you will end up eating your words. But that brings up something else. Well, then this is the next thought. 
Many of you have said, well, why don't you put the cam same camshaft in the small block Chevy and in the LS? I actually have that. This right here, I had Urson when I, this LS mule was being built. I said, build me a camshaft that's identical to the small block Chevy, at least as close as you can, in an LS. So this camshaft I own, it's there. This is the solid roller camshaft that's going into the uh, LS mule eventually. So I, I have the camshaft, I even have the lifters too. This is a solid roller camshaft. And you notice this is, now it's got slightly more lift, just the way it worked out. Um, you've got a one seven rocker ratio, uh, even though it's got less lobe lift. But this is a 260, 270, same duration. It's got a 108, same lobe center, center line too. The lift is as close as they could get to it. Very, very close. I can't wait to try this camshaft, except there's one thing that the LS guys seem to constantly forget. You are more expensive. So just to give you an idea, the hydraulic roller setup, you can get those rock arms for like next to nothing, and they work great. I have to run a shaft rocker setup to run this because I have to run a real spring with it, something that has like 260 pounds on the seat and 765 open or at least 600, 700 open about that. I think I had like 685 um, when I was running the small block. I want the same spring in that. The shaft rockers that fit the Pro Max heads, um, I've only found um, Jessels. They are around $2,400, which means it's about the same price as the actual heads. So for you LS guys, yes, your hydraulic roller lifter, or, or, sorry, rocker arms are cheaper by far your solid uh rocker arms that take that the rocker arms that could do solid rollers no because the small block chevy also had a set of jessels but had the sportsman they advertise i think they're running like 1550 there are no jessel sportsman series available for the um pro max heads or even the liberty heads liberty has their own these prq ones but they're made in china and i could tell you they're really cheap like five or six hundred bucks they break. They break. I'm not doing that. I've, I've sold them to customers who have broken them. I'm never doing that again. And I don't want my engine to break either. They say they can take the pressure. They cannot take the pressure. Um, point being is, if I had the shaft rockers, I'd already have tested this. And then I know exactly with the same camshaft, same thing, what it would do. And then I have a better answer. But anyway, a little bit longer video to explain things. Eventually that will happen. Watch for future videos because, like I said, I've compared the same advertised duration. And the results will shock you. Anyway, hopefully you get something out of this video. Guys, remember, I do not port cast iron heads. I am no Superman. You guys take care.